Hey, welcome to 16 Bit Bench, Matt here. What a lovely day, it's crazy. And you know what I like to do on lovely days is go into really dark shops and look at tiny little things. So yeah, let's get on with that. Still in Mallorca, still doing all my commentary that I forgot to do before we left. Um, so this week we're gonna be going to Snoopers Paradise. This is in the lanes in Brighton. So um, the lanes is kind of how Brighton likes to think it looks, whereas it actually, you know, is a normal city full of equally horrible people. Uh, but, uh, this is where all the bohemian sort of stuff is and all the little shops that sell interesting stuff and uh, where, you know, all the tourists kind of come and um, the kind of impression that Brighton likes to present to the rest of the country really is, is kind of how the lanes is. I mean, look, here's a skateboard shop full of skateboard and stuff and then there's a here's a tray full of uh, um, bespoke rings that someone's made and then there's some flowery dresses from the 70s that are being sold for 20 times what they were priced at in the 70s so um, here we are this is Snoopers Paradise Snoopers Paradise is full of junk um, some of it interesting some of it not so much um, so let's uh, let's go around and see what we can see so uh, straight up there's a big ass Pac-Man uh, digital alarm clock here which looks pretty cool but what I really noticed at the top are two um, boxes for uh, Commodore 64s that are in pretty good working order um, they're for the bread bin um, uh, C64 uh, not the later sort of revision um, but yeah I see two of them and one of them is empty so I'm thinking oh, maybe the other one's got a console in it and uh, sorry a computer in it and no, it doesn't. They're both empty. Uh, but yeah, £10 each for these empty boxes. Uh, not in fantastic condition. They, they're a bit worn around the edges. But yeah, if you had a bread bin C64 and you were looking for a box, um, you know, as of recording, there are two boxes in Snoopers Paradise in Brighton. So get, get down there. They might still be there. Uh, some DVDs and some games. Um, what's that? Freedom Fighters on PS2? Never heard of it. Any good? Uh, Quantum of Solace on PS3, not played it. Is it any good? Don't know. There used to be a whole um, case full of Japanese import um, Famicom and Super Famicom games here, but uh, that whoever had that uh, didn't pay their rent and got kicked out. Um, some interesting like marionettes, like a Superman, Spider-Man, Bart Simpson, and uh, guitar effects pedal there. Some woman. Down the bottom there's some Game Boy LCD games that are ridiculously high priced. I think they were £20 each or something. I have one in the office that just needs a little clean up and some fresh batteries. And trust me, when I fix it up, I'm not selling it for that much. Then uh, always come and look at the, um, the toy car area because one day there might be a slot car in it and I like slot cars. But today there isn't. Was that a limo? I don't know. You can go back and have a look, see if that was a limo. And if it is a limo, leave a comment, tell me. Ah, see this guy here, right, on the floor? Yeah, he's the guy who owns this area, full of all these um, sort of collectible and semi-retro and 90s and early 2000s toys. Of course, he's going through his phone on eBay and looking at all the prices and then putting the prices on the stuff that he puts out so I mean that's I guess that's fair play really because um, you know he has to make money to pay for the space I'm just making sure that the little one is asleep and she is so uh, we safely abandon her in the aisle and go off and look at something else nothing yes yeah, a lot of a uh, lot of drawers and cabinets and cases sort of full of old type face stuff I know people these get used in sort of art projects and you could put the typeface say in a, to a frame and then hang it on the wall or make words and letters and stuff and yeah it looks pretty cool but you know people do that already so it's not massively original they've got a lot of old vinyl a lot of old magazines mostly though you're gonna find um, like little tiny figurines and stuff 
that old people collect. I'm not really. Who who buys figurines? Is that an inkwell? If you're going to inscribe a scroll, maybe you need an inkwell, inkwell for your um, quill pen. Yeah, there's one. There's an old Monopoly there. And yeah, these, these glass things, like I, th I think you get them in Venice. Venice is, might be one of those places that's famous for its glass. Small bottles of pigment, pigment is, em is missing. A lot of patches, if you need you know, your uh, Air Cadets patch, there it is. You can join the Sea Scouts, pretend to be a Sea Scout, there's a patch. I don't know what that was. like something that the Grand Wizard of the KKK would have. Uh, interesting. There's a stool. There's more vinyl on the floor, more vinyl in the, in the racks. A couple of guitars. Yeah, if you're looking for a second hand guitar, probably not the place to come. Okay get it somewhere else but um, yeah good that they're here various coins or various denominations then down here I see a cassette recorder and a Nintendo DS uh, the DS is overpriced and the cassette recorder is also overpriced um, yeah, don't come to Snoopers expecting a bargain. You're not. What you're going to find here is maybe something very particular and strange that you wouldn't see anywhere else. And I guess that's what you're paying the money for. Um, so this everyday stuff is uh, is always going to be a bit more expensive than where you can find it somewhere else. It's a stack of dandies, I think. Spotted Desperate Dan there. A nodding dog in a London taxi. It's classic. There's a massive rack of uh, of faux vintage sunglasses. Like um, you know, they look like they're old, but they're not old. They're from China. But whoever owns that is obviously making money because they're still there. Oh, it's those two guys from before with their um. Massive stack of comics that they've priced up from eBay. I'm going to avoid those people. Through the corridor, drum kit, drum kit alert. I mean, it's just you can see what it is. It's just drawers and cupboards full of full of semi interesting stuff. And it's like you know, you walk around and go ooh, and then you move on. Someone tried to stab me with a coat hanger. She missed. There's a vintage wall clock you might have missed there. Uh, a lot of dinky toys. If you're into that sort of thing, I think they're, yeah, they're slot cars there. They're definitely scale electrics. Uh, those three in the middle. Um, so you know, it piques my interest because I'm. I'm Something I collected a few years back, and you know, I was building my own and and uh, I was refurbing old ones and fixing them up and stuff. So, you know, I still think they're pretty cool, even if most people don't. Uh, this this is interesting. This is someone who makes like little dioramas out of, out of boxes and stuff that that they find. I, I want to say she, but I don't know if it's a man or a woman. Uh, so yeah, it's interesting if you're over there, ch check that out. Um, I think they, they make they make good stuff. There's a hat. Just gonna reverse into this cupboard here. And I spot in the corner some Polaroid cameras. Yeah, they sort of come back in, didn't they? Polaroid, just 
shortly after the Polaroid company went out of business. So, uh, well done. There's a yeah. There's a couple of interesting cameras here, and again, I went through the phase of once of collecting old cameras, but then you kind of get enough, and you're like, well, this is more than I need, and I got rid of some, and now I just have like a you know a standard kind of two or three cameras for taking pictures with as a I think an AA picnic set from the or an REC picnic set from the 1970s which is uh, if you are going to have a picnic by the side of the road it seems perfectly adequate thing to do So at the back, um, there's a lot of sort of retro toys and stuff um, that I always like to come to and look at. Uh, obviously, a lot more cars and uh, and things, old telephones, a banjo. That space shuttle was uh, was interesting, fifteen quid. But I, I remember someone having a space shuttle toy when when I was small. Uh, but it actually looked like a space shuttle, and that thing looked more like a Concorde. Uh, We've got like a Humpty Dumpty clock, and there's some LCD games here. Um, they want 25 quid for that, don't think so. Um, a Star Trek LCD game, which uh, can't quite see, and then like a Tommy football game at the back as well. I, I like the LCDs for their kitsch value, but their playability is, is dire. Um, they're not, they're not really that good for, for actually playing. There's a sexy soap on a rope there, and a stuffed fox. So, yeah, there's a couple of nudie things in the back there. Um, there's a Dumbo, some Snoopies, a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. I think that was Raphael from the uh, from the original run of those figures. And then there's some. I don't know. They seem to. they I think the Marvel figures are from like a collectible um, series. That I remember seeing in a comic book shops like Forbidden Planet. So they're not actual like original action figures from the period. They're reissues um, that then this person is trying to s sort of sell off as originals. On the table here is a massive stack of uh, practical mechanics from the sort of 40s and 50s. It's 958 that one. Um, if you go back far enough, they seem to be decidedly impractical. Um, like this one is about going to space, and then there may be one about oh yeah, building your own helicopter. Um, I think as time went on, practical mechanics got slightly more practical. I mean, you know, one man auto gyro that's totally something that you could knock up in your backyard. I, I see that happening. Uh, and oh, a, a Sputnik. You know, if, if you needed your own orbital satellite. Um, yeah, there's a guide to it there. Yeah, I'm not sure that is a publication that is still produced. <laughs> yeah, in the there's a grandstand. Uh, these aren't LCD. These are, these are fluorescent tube games. Um, Astro Wars. I, I do have one of these in the shop. That I, I don't know if it works or not. I've, I've never bothered to power it up. Uh, it's up on the shelf, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm really interested in 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 those kind of games. Like they they have the same limitation as LCD games, but uh, the graphics just look nicer because they, they sort of glow. That that fluorescent tube glows, and you get you do get a couple of colours, like um, three or four colours, depending on the tube they've put in there. And if you want a picture of a peacock, there's one. Just making our way through this section. What I want to do is get to that cupboard in the back that you can't quite see because I know that's got video games in it, and uh, you know. So I'm going to have to go around the long way because those women were in the way, and I'm too passive to tell them to move. 
so here we see um, He-Man as an Orko and a Battle Cat and a He-Man at the back and some other stuff and that case has obviously come from another shop, Storm of London and then the um, Dukes of Hazard sort of watch, wrist watch racer thing, I had that as a kid and I, I lost it almost immediately or I broke it immediately after getting it. Um, it like went on your wrist as a watch but it wasn't a watch, it had a car in it and it had a, like an extendable ramp that came off and then a rip tie I think, you pulled the rip cord thing and it went <laughs> and it shot out and uh, I think I smashed it straight away. Uh, Robocop 2 trading cards, um, you know, more sought after some would say than the Robocop 1 trading cards. Planet of the Apes, a uh, box keyboard there. What else? Definitely some interesting stuff. So yeah, I finally make my way uh, to the back of the shop. Have to squeeze through with a pram. Ugh. Can't get through that way. Have to go around the counter. Ugh. Don't get me wrong, I love taking the I love taking the baby out of me, but you know. She's making it hard for me to climb into crevices and search through boxes. So we've got to train her up quickly, get her out there, looking for stuff. Okay, so this cabinet at the back is pretty much the only cabinet that has any significant amount of video games in it. Um, it varies, obviously they, they have a turnover. A lot of PS2 you can see at the top, I can't really make out what they are. Some box stuff is pretty cool. Uh, don't know why there's knockoff Chinese headphones in iPhone headphones in there, but there is. I know in here there's usually some Game Gear games, um, not rare titles. I, I bought the only rare thing that was in there, which was a copy of Nappy, um, which is a Japanese release Game Gear game. Not massively rare, but it you know it was in there. There's a see that Explorer cartridge that is a um, sort of cheat device for the PS1 plugs into the parallel port at the back um, but I think you need the CD and the controller the sort of interface that goes with it so on its own that cartridge is pretty useless oh uh, yeah that's all the that's all the video games we find in that cabinet um, so there's nothing more really to do than to make our way out and back into the sunshine Hey, so that was fun. I think those uh, those Commodore 64 boxes were interesting. Not really sure they would add too much value to an unboxed Commodore 64. Um, maybe you'd double, double your money there. They were a tenner each. Maybe you'd make an extra 20 quid. Who knows? Anyway, thanks for dropping by. If you found the video useful, please like and subscribe. Uh, leave a comment if you've found anything, uh, anything good recently. I'd really like to know. And uh, yeah, um, we'll follow us on Facebook and Twitter at 16 Bit Bench, and we'll see you next time being shown to her quarters. We're ready to get him. With something like this here. You don't look like a person who came here to buy. Oh, sir. Something's wrong? Counselor Troy's. Morta.